So much anticipation around the all new and first ever Kia Sonnet. The subcompact SUV was in the works even before Kia opened its innings in India a year ago. And yes, this is intended to be a global model. But like the Seltos a year ago, the little sibling is also hitting our market first. And the Seltos has been a runaway success. Can the Sonnet dominate this other high volume segment? Gotta have that two-tone roof these days, right? Yes, it's a modern design element. It makes the car look contemporary in terms of shape and proportion. It is very much the chunky SUV. And it'll remind you more in terms of shape and uh, attribute of uh, the, the overall look of the car of the Ford EcoSport. Not so much cars like the XUV300 or the Vitara Brezza or even the Venue, which are a little bit more rectangular. So I like that because it gives the car a different kind of stance. Now, the whole upright, chunky, boxy, muscular sort of stance that I am talking about gets really enhanced by this hood. You can see these nice little scooped up elements, gives a lot of height to the hood in the middle. High gloss black grille up front, nicely bordered by chrome, which has uh, got that little texture in it, just like on the Seltos. What you don't get, of course, is the Seltos like big continuous LED DRL. Instead, you have this one, which, uh, yes, right now is being sort of alluded to the vampire's teeth, but it's more of the heartbeat that uh, Kia is known for. The bumper itself is nice and chunky as well. And this is the GT line, which is why you have so many of the red elements in the grill and the red elements down here. And even this little styling element, which uh, gives the car a certain character. You'll only get that on the GT line fog lamp and overall the skid plate down here the impression is very much SUV and yet very conveniently staying in that subcompact footprint. The Sonnet is a looker and I have to say the GT line looks more aggressive and sexier than the tech line especially that front bumper. Those are the two design trims you can expect. The Sonnet first showed up as a concept car at the Delhi Auto Expo. The production version is very close to that concept's design, which is great. You see the car on your screen sports a new gold color. That will be the new color for the Sonnet. The rest would be similar to what you've seen on the Seltos. At the back, the car's design remains true to the concept in many ways. Yes, that's a good thing because the proportion really does work. You also get a bit of a lift in this design from the back because it is so vertical back here. From an SUV sensibility, that's a good thing because uh, people are going to appreciate that. The other thing that I think does work is this element of connecting the tail lights. This is not a lit element, it's just a reflector, but it gives you a sense of width and makes the boot look a little bit more ample than it actually is. The taillights are of course LED and you do have the little heartbeat motif just to complement the overall theme. They call it wild, remember. Down here, you see red bits from the GT line. So of course that's got to do with the trim as I've said before. You do have a very sporty stance here. You know, you've got the skid plate and uh, the diffuser and uh, also the four a uh, twin exhaust element. That's just a design detail, but yes, it does look nice. It makes the car have a nicer stance, look a little bit sporty. The boot itself, well, you might not think it's too big, but take a look. From this particular segment's point of view, that there is pretty ample. After the Seltos and the Carnival, it's no surprise, you did expect this cabin to be fairly impressive and it does impress you on design and layout. And remember, at the Auto Expo, we never got to see the car from the inside on that concept that was displayed. So this whole layout is new for us. It is smart, it's modern, it's different too. And I like the fact that there are these chunky buttons here for the uh, climate control. The AC vents, extremely different and uh, they have that little 
signature pattern that you also see down here in the uh, gearbox housing. That's the same sort of pattern. It complements uh, what the front grille has, what the Celtos had. So that's a nice signature. I like that. This is now the GT line, so which is why it's black and you've got red stitching on the seats. You've got red stitching on the steering, the GT line badging as well. And the whole all black treatment does work. I mean, my fear was it's going to make the cabin look really small. But thankfully, that doesn't happen. There is a sunroof. Yes, this is the top end trim, obviously. You have the segment first 10.25 inch touch screen, which is great because I think that's going to impress a lot of people. It's also really well laid out. Instrument cluster is digital. You've got a, a whole lot going on there in terms of information. And the animations, again, fresh, different for this segment. I like that. The bad bits, the plastics, well, the surface up here is not so bad. I think it has a decent tactile feel. But down here, I mean, yes, I understand this is a budget segment, but uh, the plastics down there could have been a whole lot better. This just feels a little bit uh, more Maruti-like. The gearbox, well, this is the GT line with the DCT and uh, the GDI engine. Lots of controls on the steering wheel and interesting little design elements. That's the part that does impress you because you can see there's a lot of thought that's been put in. On the AC vents, I already talked about it. Even the speakers, they have that little bit of a geometric diamond pattern and it all comes together to make the car look really high end and uh, people are going to like that in this segment. Seat, fairly comfortable. Another grouse I have is that this is a steering that can be adjusted for uh, height, but not for reach. So it's not telescopic. That's a big no for me. But uh, the wireless charger, I'm sure that, uh, of course, only happens at the top end. But it's nice that it has its own tray and it spares up this extra room, just like in the Celtos. That's a thoughtful, good design detail. Connectivity, well, you've got Uvo Connect, of course, and uh, you have voice commands. How can I help you? Cancel. <laughs> Not much I can do while I'm indoors with the car, but what I'm trying to say is it has the entire connectivity suite that you saw on the Celtos and the Carnival. And yes, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto goes without saying. The 4.2-inch instrument console screen display has lots of information. That includes turn-by-turn -turn navigation, tire pressure monitoring, and also tells you which drive mode you're in. If you are an audiophile, the Sonnet also gets a 7-speaker Bose audio system with a subwoofer along with LED sound mood lamps to get the ambience going. The other first in segment feature is that the Sonnet is programmed to receive over-the-air updates for maps and navigation. Top spec models get remote engine start via the Kia Uvo Connect app. It's just a small design detail, sort of like a quarter glass, but it does help enhance the sense of space on the inside. On a subcompact, I'll take it. That's a smart thing and nicely done. I've also done uh, the usual where I pushed that seat all the way forward, this one all the way back. This is a first impression. Wanted to try and give you a sense of space that you get in here. And I have to say, for a subcompact again, that is not bad at all. Rear AC vents, again, finished the same way as uh, in the front. USB charging point, always welcome. Drop-down armrest, well, almost becoming a standard sort of a thing these days with the cup holders, but I am waiting for the time when uh, a car maker decides to make the middle passenger's seat belt also a three-point seat belt. So for now, you just get a lap belt, which by law is all you need. But otherwise, the seat itself, the angle, the under thigh support, and yes, the leg room, it is actually quite smartly done. You feel upright like you're in an SUV, and yet you get a sense of comfort there's a good amount of headroom as well. So yes, I think the Sonnet scores quite nicely on the back seat overall. And then yes, you've also got the uh, air purifier that's been thrown in. That is a top end feature and you also get ventilated seats up front as a top end feature, of course. These are some nice little segment firsts which pamper you and which also become practical in today's environment. And with the ongoing Corona crisis, Kia says the air purifier comes with virus protection too. That's very apt given the COVID times we live in. While the GT line trim gives you an all black interior with those red elements, the tech line will give you a lighter palette on the seats and the lower half of the doors and dash. Safety is well addressed. Two thirds of the chassis is made up of advanced high strength steel, making for a frame that is light yet strong. 
the Sonnet gets up to six airbags, anti-lock brakes, hill assist, stability control, brake assist and isofix anchors for child seats. The Kia Sonnet shares its platform with cars like the Hyundai Venue and Brand i10 Neos and so like the Venue, the Sonnet is expected to sport three engine options. The petrol side will have the 1.0-litre GDI Turbo and the 1.2, while the diesel will be the 1.5 Common Rail. Kia had already announced at the Auto Expo that there will be a variant with IMT or Intelligent Manual Transmission. The Hyundai Venue recently received this variant too. The transmission is expected only on the 1.0-litre GDI, which is also the only one with the option of the 7-speed DCT or Dual Clutch Automatic Transmission. I am expecting a lot of variants on this car and pricing should fall in the 7 to 12 lakh rupee category and that is pretty competitive if that is where Kia goes with it. We'll wait for that. But you see 7 DCT here which tells you that this is the GDI engine with that 7-speed automatic gearbox which is getting the Kia Hyundai Group a lot of love these days. Now that badging is a little too loud and big and a little too MG like for my liking. Yes, you also get the IMT now on the manual. That's again, not a segment first, the venue has it too, but it's something that should catch on. You do get the IMT badging on that variant, if that's the one you opt for. But when you talk about the segment, the other big USP, there's also going to be a diesel automatic, which I think a lot of people are going to like. Yes, a diesel auto is a great idea, as it's sorely missing in this segment. I welcome that move from Kia. The brand does have the power to surprise after all, doesn't it? Even the Seltos had impressed with its multiple gearbox offer and the Sonnet follows suit. Excellent! Besides the Hyundai Venue, the Sonnet also needs to take on the Tata Nexon, Mahindra XUV300, Maruti Suzuki Vitara Brezza, Ford EcoSport, the upcoming Nissan Magnite and Toyota Urban Cruiser and to an extent the Honda WRV2. The Kia Sonnet launches by mid-September and I reckon this is another potential blockbuster in the making for Kia.